It is the sixth annual She Believes Cup. The tournament has been dominated by the U.S. They have won every other year. They're looking to be the first repeat champion since this tournament started. Belief to break. Belief to breakthrough is sponsored by Deloitte. And we're talking about Tierna Davidson in the starting lineup today. And for Tierna, it's the tenth time that she's been paired with Becky Sauerbrunn in the center of that defense. They started together the last time in the very last game of Jill Ellis back in October of 2019 versus South Korea. Ready for the kickoff. It is Argentina on the ball. They're in white. USA in blue with seven changes in their starting 11 from the game on Sunday versus Brazil. Brazil won their game earlier today, 2-0 versus Canada. So right now, they are on top with that extra game being played. A draw or a win, and the USA are champions again. On this right side, it's Delgado. Uber, number eight for Argentina, started all three games. Up the middle, pass from Comenti. Getting the start in place of Alyssa Nair, who had 10 consecutive shutouts, red hot end goal. Good opportunity tonight, Ali, for Jane Campbell. It is a good opportunity, and she was well off her line there to read that service in behind. Well, found the young 20 year old, the one supplying that to Rodriguez on the left side. Rodriguez will get a little bit higher if Argentina can maintain possession and get out of their own end. Argentina on that ball. They overhit that intended for a high miss. Sauerbrunn switching over to right center back where Abby Dahlkamper normally plays. Here's Rodriguez and Lavelle came back to win it. For O'Hara, Kelly's first appearance in the She Believes Cup. Missed the first two games with a minor injury. Deemed okay to play tonight. Christy Mewis, another player to watch tonight. Same with Kruger getting an opportunity in the second line. Lloyd left. Press makes a run in the box. Will not open as well, but the ball could not be cut back to Rose. In a little different start than I expected from Argentina, their initial line of confrontation higher up on the field, which means everyone else is a bit more stretched in behind them. And the U.S. is going to like that. I think they came into this match. Vlaco told us he was expecting them to sit in a real low block in a 4-2-3-1. And early signs suggest that perhaps they're going to be a little more aggressive in their defending, a little more aggressive in their attack. Press with it. That's the way they were against Brazil, not against Canada, though. That game was 0-0 after 90 minutes, and then they gave up a goal to Canada. Two minutes in a stoppage time. Yeah, you're exactly right. Against Brazil, they were more aggressive. Against Canada, they sat in deeper blocks. Lavelle laid it back for Kelly O'Hara. Sauerbrunn. Davidson. Tiana's second start this year. Only played one game last year due to ankle problems. Lavelle, good job to keep it in, but can't get to it. Nunez. Rodriguez. Pressure and Lavelle touched it last. That is Argentina's head coach Carlos Barrello. Coached this team in three different World Cups spanning a large number of years. It was a huge gap from 2007 to 2019 when they qualified again. U.S. throw in for O'Hara. Kelly gets it back. She'll be playing this summer for the Washington Spirit of the NWSL. Kruger from the Chicago Red Stars. Davidson, her teammate there, for Sauerbrunn. Up the middle. The flip from Lloyd to press, and it's cut up by Cometti. She clears it away. Kruger back on it. Casey was a sub against Canada, played nine minutes. It's her first start in 2021. Okay. 
Sauerbund outside the circle. LaBelle. That was blocked, and here's Hymas. Big forward, knocked away by LaBelle. Clipped ahead. Too far away from Rodriguez. And it will roll out for Argentina. Throw in. Vladko Andonovsky's team trying to be the first team in Shiva Leafs Cup history to have three consecutive shutouts in a single tournament. It's a good stat, JP. Yeah. Let's see if they can get that done. They've had two wins by pretty close scores, actually. That was a 1-0 game over Canada, and Ali was really 1-0 until the late goal by Rapino. Yeah, that and a silly mis you're right, a silly mistake by Canada as well to give away the set piece that the U.S. ultimately scored on. And you can see the high boot by O'Hara, catches Rodriguez. Dangerous play. Argentina having to go without arguably their best player in Lorena Benitez tore her right ACL in the game Sunday against Canada. And she was having such a good tournament. They'll miss her tonight. Argentina back of the ball. Comenti started all three games. Several players on this squad have started all three games. They didn't come here with a deep team. Had 22, not 23 players at the start. Four players had some COVID issues, so they were really short-handed in terms of depth, especially in that first game. Press will send it back. Press with a goal in the last game. Looking very much in form on that attack for the U.S. Julie Ertz, 10 straight full 90s for Ertz, a workhorse. Kruger, Davidson, Sauerbrunn, halfway line gain for the U.S., seventh minute. The U.S. and Argentina, zeroes to the board, O'Hara, the cross, off the chest of Lloyd. Of course, Tuck's not as clean as she wanted, and the flag was up anyway. And it's good play on the right side for the U.S. You're already seeing the interchange between Rose Lavelle, Kristen Press, and in this case, Kelly O'Hara getting the more advanced position. And Carly Lloyd just sitting between the two center backs. Takes that one down off her chest, but as you said, an offside position. And that's one of the reasons I think Lloyd is in this match, is to see if she can be get on the end of service against Argentina. If the U.S. can pin in Argentina, likely you're going to see a lot of wide play. Didn't hit cleanly, now it comes out to Lloyd, and that wasn't handled either cleanly. Ertz will bring this down for Kruger. Taken away by Falfan. She'll get it back. Nunez will go back. The 21-year-old goalkeeper, Pereira. Gave it right back to the U.S. Recipe for disaster. It goes in for Lloyd, but now the flag's up again. As Pereira was debating whether to come out for that or not. And here's a look at the quick play, the quick throw in from the United States. Carly Lloyd checks over, good back to goal play. She brings that ball down. Rose Lavelle gets around the outside. And then the cutback ball right at the edge of the six. Newest kid get there for the Argentinian defender. But that's where space is going to be for the United States. If they can get around the edge, it is that cutback ball. And with those late runs coming out of mid, Argentina likes to get more man centric, follow players around the pitch, and the U.S. can start to manipulate them and get those second runs coming from late positions. Kruger comes back for it. Formerly Casey Short. She got married last December. 
Her husband is an emergency room physician in Chicago, a frontline worker. Here's Lavelle. Side, Rapino. Christy Nealis. Nice ball ahead. Rapino kept it low. That's blocked. Lafon with the clearance up towards Hymas. She's pretty much on her own up there. Sauerberg first to get it. Back to Jane Campbell. Ertz, quick turn. Looks for that immediate long ball, but too far for press. And the execution wasn't there, but there is space in behind this Argentinian back line. We're seeing Kristen Press come into those interior channels more than staying wide. Pereira went long, and Tanifo Hymas. Davidson's header, then Mewis. Argentina will win it back. Cometti goes back to goal. Somewhat risky, not a good ball back, and that was even riskier. Little game of here, kitty kitty. Yeah. Tap it out. Aggressive challenge by Lavelle. In the 11th minute. Well, this right side is where the U.S. tries to filter play so they can win it and break. And you see the heavy challenge come in from Rose Lavelle. Cometi was a player down. She wore the captain's armband previously, but tonight it is Santana wearing it. Hurts and Hymas. That goes against Argentina. Kruger will push back for Davidson. By this time, the last game, Kristen Press already had the U.S. on the board. Davidson. Back for Sauerbrunn. Guerra. Back to the captain. Up for Lavelle. Kruger kept it alive, looks for Rapino. Megan will send it back. Ertz had a stretch for that. Ertz, long one there, wanted Mewis on the run. Cleared out by Delgado. for press. Ertz, first one on it. Four Kruger. For Julie Ertz. The cutback block. Lavelle shot over. Tough ball for her to take out of the air. And that's three times already the United States has been able to do a one-two, a quick one-two around Delgado, the right back. You can see no recovery effort from her at all. And then Ertz tries to play that little cutback ball. You've got two options. And Rose Lavelle, Christy Mewis, it's not the right connection from Ertz initially, and then Lavella has two bites at it. Again, poor finishing, poor final execution from the United States. That's the final piece that Blatko and Danofsky said Ali was missing. A lot of these players are in, I guess, preseason form, early preseason form with NWSL, so that's the part that's going to come last. It hasn't been good in this tournament. No, it hasn't, and that's just typical. I mean, as far back as I can recall, we've always talked with the United States about how we always create so many chances that we're almost a little too relaxed when we do get those chances. And it's been the case in this tournament. He did say their patience was better on Sunday and their problem solving was better, but the finishing was not. I think you could say the same thing again already tonight. I mean, they've already created some good chances. They are manipulating the defense of Argentina, and I think they are reading that 
that space is actually on him behind when maybe that was not the anticipation coming into the match. And one of the things you can see out of the United States is they're working on that counter movement. Can you get a Lloyd checking off the back line and then a press running in behind? Can you drag him out of the space that ultimately you try to get into? And they're trying to do that with their fullbacks with Kelly O'Hara, with Casey Krug on the far side, you know, pull up that outside mid. So now Rose Lavelle has a bigger pocket of space to operate in. Rapino. Ertz. That's blocked. Favon. Blocked again. Ertz working her way through to press. She wanted O'Hara. The pass wasn't there. Rodriguez blocked and there's a collision there with Rodriguez and press. In middle, Rodriguez stays down. Up it comes for Pino. And turn the shot. And a goal for the U.S. They take the lead. the top score in she believes cup history with her sixth and argentina just gets caught in their transition from attack to defense and the united states capitalizes on this case it's christian press working back ultimately helping lavelle win that ball and then lavelle gets her head up rapino snuck to the inside and even though that ball checks up argentina is still not close enough to make a play on it and rapino can calmly let that roll right in front of her path and then does so well on that finish. Cut it back against the momentum of the goalkeeper, Pereira. So the U.S. is on top of a Rapino goal. And now it's 66 straight matches with at least a goal. And during that time, they've been averaging really three goals a game. So the offense has been terrific during that stretch of games. Well, let's see what that goal does to this game. Flip long. Lloyd heads it down. Christy Mewis. Flag was up. It's a goal in the 16th minute for Megan Rapino. It's only the second goal scored by the U.S. in the first half of this tournament. And they will bring this back. Vlad Grandinovsky, a perfect 15-0-0. Keeps adding to that record. Best start for U.S. coach. Rapino with his cross. Nobody at that post. Getting there is O'Hara. Looking to turn it. For left foot in. Did such a good job to get that ball in off her left foot. Yeah, and to rinse off the defenders of Argentina, that ball curling into the path, and this is a look at Rapino's strike on net. Neither center back in position to make a play and get just a good finish. I think Rapino or Lloyd could have taken that ball initially, both in the same vicinity. Back to live action, clearance by Santana. Davidson putting it ahead. On the turn there, it's Menendez. On the back heel, too fancy there. The ball is given away. 14 players from this Argentina team were at the World Cup in France in 2019. So they have some experience there, as this is ruled a goal kick. Missing a few key players is definitely a needy one of them. Yeah, they've had some problems, Allie. You know, to see them be competitive makes you wonder how good they can be if they had the proper funding and the proper management. They didn't play for 15 months, and they came out, gave Brazil a game, gave Canada a game, and have started off decent here against the U.S. Absolutely correct. And my 
understanding is that they're hoping to be full-time professionals within five years, but right now they're still a semi-professional league in Argentina. A few of the big teams, both the juniors, River Plate, they will fund all the salaries of their players, but they're the anomaly. That's yeah. not the standard, and that has to start shifting. Boca Juniors were the champs this year. 7-0 in the final over River Plate. Seven players from that Boca team were with Argentina here at the She Believes Cup. None from River Plate, interestingly enough. The other big squad. The U.S. up on a goal by Megan Rapino. Came in the 16th minute. This is Argentina's history. Group stage is a bit misleading because in 2019, they were pretty good. They only drew with mighty Japan 0-0. That was a good game. They lost 1-0 to a better England side and then trailed Scotland 3-0 and came back and drew them with three goals in 16 minutes. So they surprised a lot of people in France in 2019. They were incredibly organized. And we saw that actually against Canada in this second match of the She Believes. I think today they're, they are playing a little differently than, than we expected. Being more brave. And interestingly enough, they utilized both the same outside backs that they utilized against Brazil. Up field they come with Rodriguez. Jaimes plays for a club team in China. Comes all the way back to Jane Campbell. On that lob distribution, she will find Rapino. Hurts. Sauerbrunn. Well, hi, if you've joined us late, you're wondering about all of these changes. There are no injuries for the U.S. Katarina McCoy did go back to Lyon, where she'll be playing in the Champions League game coming up. Had to adhere to quarantine rules, but... The changes made tonight are not because of injury. So, in particular, Jane Campbell getting the start tonight. Alyssa Nair getting a well-earned breather as the U.S. tries to sort out who will be the backup goalkeeper from the Olympics. So the challenge coming in from behind by number 15, Menendez, on Casey. I want to say Casey Short, but now it's Casey Kruger. 22nd minute, U.S. up by a goal. Rapino on the ball. It was a sub the other night when she scored. Start of the other games. Cleared by Pereira. Hurts. Just didn't press wide. That one hit. I thought off an Argentina player. It did. Another U.S. throw in from O'Hara. Sour run for Davidson. Sovereign kept it low. Blocked. It falls to Lavelle. Pushing it. Ten from U.S. Tackled away. It's a good play there by Delgado. Megan Rapino. Cutting it inside, wanted the return, but that one didn't work. Lavelle gets it back for Rapino. Tap back for Davidson. Davidson out of Stanford University was an NWSL overall number one pick of Chicago. O'Hara lost it there. Nunez pass. The U.S. will end up with the ball again on this throw-in. Rose LaBelle by the corner flag. The cross off her right foot. It'll bounce. Christine U.S. couldn't settle it. Chase back to Sauerbrunn. Hurts. Tina Davidson will go opposite for Casey Kruger. And you can just see now as Argentina sits in lower, they have no intention on putting any pressure on the center backs and how they dictate play. The wingers worry about those fullbacks. Five goes against Santana. Oh, Lifting one up. 
Christy Mewis was there. And this is such a good ball by Casey Kruger. Just a quick set play by the United States. No pressure at all. No one stepping to her. Casey Kruger picks out her pass. And if you're Kristen Press, you've got to go with your head. You attack that ball. You drive it down near post or far post. But I think the worst option is to cut your angle down and go with your foot there. Ten goals for her in her last 13 games. She's been involved in 27 goals in the last 29. 12 of those are goals, 15 assists. Davidson. And that's going to go out of play. U.S. with a one-goal lead on the goal by Megan Rapino, her 56th international goal. She becomes the all-time leading goal scorer in She Believes Cup history with six. Throw in Delgado. Lavelle will collect. Sauerbrunn as O'Hara peels off right. It'll go left instead for Davidson. to do. You saw all four backs, two center backs and both outside backs in the United States staying deep. Kelly O'Hara staying deep and that created the space underneath. In this case it was Kristen Press who was going to rotate more towards the inside. Lavelle is pulling wide and she's going to pop off into that pocket of space that's created by the movement of Lavelle. Now she takes a brilliant first touch to get around Falfon and then a perfect slip pass. Carly Lloyd does the exact right thing, unselfish in that final ball. And Megan Rapino just betting on her teammates. She's going to provide that service. And the U.S. get up 2 nothing. What a goal. That was unselfish. Lloyd could have taken that shot. And doing the work to get in her def inside her defender, Megan Rapino. Lloyd getting close to 300 caps to become only the third player to do that. And the yellow card was just issued. First booking of this match to Nunez. Match referee is Marianela Araya Cruz. She is from Costa Rica. And for Carly Lloyd, that's seven assists now in her last ten games. And that was the challenge, the foul, and the yellow on Nunez. Free kick. Curling. Off Lloyd. Offside. Here's a look at Lloyd just attacking the goal, drawing out the goalkeeper, Pereira. And then a nice slip pass. Easy finish in the end for Rapino. 17 plus years for Carly Lloyd in a USA uniform as we mentioned getting closer to those 300 caps and she'll probably get that come April when they play expected to play again. Here's Rapino. Lloyd makes the run. Off the right foot and then the post. That was unlucky there for Carly. Didn't get the feet where she wanted them to. And Rapino almost repaying the favor to Lloyd. Good win by Casey Kruger. She steps up. And in the seam that Rapino's in, wide open. Brilliant ball behind the back line. Great bend on it, shaping it into the path of Carly Lloyd. And as you said, JP, that one just under her. You can't sort out her feet. Yeah, looked like she almost lost her footing just a touch there. As Rapino goes with the short corner. Lloyd and Rapino very active here. It goes into the box. Now outside for Christy Mewis. O'Hara in there, press, and that's unusual for her. She's been money lately, not that time. And another good service from Kelly O'Hara. The ball back draws out Argentina. A few players actually look like are offside, but press wasn't and sneaks in. 
Can't finish it, though. Moreta put it back into play. 30th minute, U.S. up by two, only needing a draw to win another trophy. Rupino, what a pass, live blocked. First one on it, O'Hara, tackled away by Yamilo Rodriguez. It's a U.S. corner. Kristen Press will take this one from the far side of the stadium. But not yet. Santana's being spoken to. Now Press is ready. the middle skips by a couple in blue Kruger's shot blocked off uber then the clearance by sash davidson christy mewis that's blocked older sister of sam mewis recovering from injury back in england where she plays for manchester city u.s winning it back Rapino, press, open shot, save by Pereira, it's loose, and then press somehow got to a rebound of that, put it open. And it's the counter press of the United States that is so suffocating, they win the ball back. And then press sitting a little bit deeper than Rapino with that ball coming back at her. Good reaction save by Pereira. O'Hara is coming out. Emily Sutter is coming in. We expected this. We were told yesterday that Kelly O'Hara would probably just get 30 minutes. And I don't know what the injury was specifically, Ali, but Kelly O'Hara was flying tonight. Yeah, she was getting up in that right side attack and doing all the things that tactically I believe this squad wanted from her, knowing when to pull out, pull the opposition a little bit away from their own net to create the space underneath for players to go at them. But she had a couple good services. So this was a planned sub before. Nothing she did in this game. There's a reason for taking her out. Here's LaBelle's cross in. Just missing. Into the box. Intended for Lloyd. And that's blocked. And the foul anyway. Meanwhile, Emily Sonnet will just be a like-for-like -like swap with O'Hara. This is the ball that Rose Lavelle picks the pocket of off Argentina and then drives end line. The cutback coming and you see actually that regain shape that the U.S. has. The countermeasures they have in place for when they don't keep possession. It allows them to win the ball high up on the pitch in that counter press earlier and more often. U.S. with a two-goal lead, both of those goals by Megan Rapino. Rapino on it, will push it back. Davidson. Back for Tierna. Argentina getting it back. Mendez lost it. Sonnet played her 50th international game Sunday versus Brazil. Lavelle also got to game number 50 for the U.S. in that same game. Sour run. Going long. Press again. Kristen on the cut. There's another move. Another. So a tug there from Nunez, who's already in the yellow. So that was a bit risky for her as it's knocked out. U.S. will have a throw in from Sonnet. In a press, drives it across, just missed Lloyd. 
They're driving balls into the box on a regular basis. Ertz. Sour run. Back for Julie Ertz. Lupino's flick. Christy Mewis in the box. Playing it for Lloyd. Carly Lloyd. 3 to the U.S. The goals are coming. And what's so pretty about this goal by the United States is the timing of it all. You've seen they're utilizing the little pocket of space underneath the back line and behind the mids. In this case, it's Christy Mewis just sitting there patiently. You get the checkoff run of Rapina wide and the first time ball in behind for Christy Mewis wide open. And now she's got an ability to get her head up. I love this look at it. Actually splits between the legs of Delgado. And then Christy Mewis picks out a pass with Carly Lloyd sneaking in front of her defender in the center of the box. Those rotations are so key to the way the United States play is under Block It's Very much intent on utilizing the rotations of their attacking mid, your wing play, and your fullback in those wide channels. And tonight they're just having their way with Argentina. Argentina. Carly Lloyd's 124th international goal, her 11th goal in her last 19 games played. Sonnet on the ball. The assist going to Christy Mewis, who is making her first start for the USA since March of 2014. This is someone that was on the U.S. squad, then off the radar for so long, did well in the NWSL, got a recall of the team, and has looked good. In fact, has played now in five consecutive games. Hurts for Sonnet. U.S. in total control here now. They figured out the finishing part today. Three to nothing is your score. 37th minute. That's the first time we've seen Vlad Grandinovsky calmly sitting. <laughs> He's had a lot to stand up for. The three goals, all good ones from his team. Press. Sour run. The flick ahead. Sonnet's on the run against Nunez. Sonnet getting free. Low cross in. Lloyd on the turn. Lost it is Christy Mewis. Stopped by Pereira. Rodriguez. You don't want to be caught dribbling there. U.S. takes it away. Lloyd near the corner flag. Pushing it back for Sonnet. Sauerbrunn. Davidson. Now Sauerbrunn will advance with that pass. Cut off by Delgado. And then she lost it out. Pino got the throw in quick. They just want to keep everything going on the front foot, the U.S. Three goals in the first half matches what the U.S. scored in the first two games. In total. Cut the head. Locked and almost given right back to Lloyd. Yamila Rodriguez with that pass ahead. Jaimes. Rodriguez. Cut off. Davidson goes back to Jane Campbell. It's a really good ball out of the back by Tierna Davidson on her favorite left foot. And you get that diagonal. Kristen Press holding the width and a really good first touch because it actually takes her by Nunez and eliminates her recovery effort. A little selfish at the end by Press. Has Rapino in the box. Difficult angle from there. 
this term is over. Press heads back to Manchester United. Finish out her first season over in England. Herrera making her eighth international appearance. Will send this long. Falfon picks it up. Menendez can't find it. Wide for Sonnet. The touch for Lavelle. Off that cultured left foot. Almost found its way to Christy Mewis. Off Kruger. Santana gave it back to Lavelle. Repeat off the middle this time. Got clipped. Will draw a free kick. And it's no disrespect to Argentina because, as you know, they haven't played together for over a year and before they came into this tournament. But games like this can give the United States bad habits. Just that last ball by Rose Lavelle, ill-advised. Sonnet. Lavelle. And that goes out. She avoided the challenge from Prometti. In March, the U.S. men will take part in CONCACAF's Olympic Qualifying Championship. Two tickets to Japan are up for grabs in a tournament you can catch right here on Fox Sports. Coming up at halftime, a pre-recorded conversation with the head coach of that team, Jason Price. The U.S. has not qualified for the Olympics since 2008. They've missed the last two. So this is a big qualifying tournament coming up. Press. Crossing. Rapino. Christy Mewis missed on that connection. Kruger steps up, winning it. Mewis, nice touch. Mewis, go! For another U.S. And if this is about making a case for being on that Olympic roster, I think Casey Kruger and Christy Mewis are, are having themselves a night. Good pick off by Kruger and the simple pass. Christy Mewis gets on the turn and finishes it. And this was the previous play. Or excuse me, the same play that Casey Kruger picked off the pass for. Spun her defender, and that's a really difficult finish. Tough angle for her. Does the work back and then opens up. Knows pressure's going to arrive late. And gets that touch past her. An offensive explosion in this opening half. And for Christy Mewis, it's her fourth international goal. Sauerbrunn moving it ahead. Ertz. Slowed down by Kaufman. Press on it. Sonnet. it. Here's Kristen Press sending it back for Davidson. Pino was open, but they missed on that connection. The Delgado pass blocked. High miss. Delgado. Santana. All the way across to Nunez. Argentina could use some possession here. All they've been doing is defending the last... 25 or so minutes. Cometti drives it all the way across. It's well done. Now Davidson will knock it away. But that's the best stretch of possession Argentina's had. Maybe a good six or seven passes they strung together. Positive passes for the most part. Yeah, I think they started the match with a, with a good string as well. But you're exactly right. It's the first meaningful spell we've seen. Cometi. Another long ball. Wanted Rodriguez. Sonnet had her covered. Press on it. 44th minute. And that is the area, the left side of Argentina, that if they are going to find some joy in this match, I think it would come from with Rodriguez and Jaimez floating over. Tierna Davidson, the closing minutes of this opening half. It's headed away to Nunez. 
Rodriguez tried to pull it back. Lavelle gets it after Sonnet helped. Rose off the left foot, slightly behind. Rapino as Mewis makes a run. Megan will keep it low for Lloyd. Holly went down with Clemente there. In the 45th minute. And if you recall in that opening match against Brazil, it was Clemente who gave away the penalty to Brazil against Adriana to get them on the score sheet for the first goal. And not a lot in that. No. Almost at 45 as Pereira sends another long ball near the halfway line. I just got the first header to it. U.S. will collect it, and no stoppage time. That is the way the first half is going to come to an end. But it's been the best finishing for the U.S. in quite some time. Two goals by Megan Rapino, one by Carly Lloyd, one by Christy Mewis. It is all USA for nothing versus Argentina. Up, well done, and some players are going to be swapped out. I'll give you the subs. It is. Lindsey Horan in, Alex Morgan in, Midge Hurst in, out is Casey Kruger, Carly Lloyd, and Rose Lavelle. And, and speaking with Vladko Andonovsky yesterday, these changes are not a surprise. That is what they had said they would do if all things went the way they thought. We just saw Stabile coming in for Argentina, so we'll have to get you their subs when we get those confirmed. So if you are Argentina, you're losing 4-0. Now you see Lindsey Horan and Alex Morgan <laughs> come in. Fresh legs, fresh ideas, and all that talent. Second half underway. Again, we will get you the Argentina subs when we've got those confirmed. It's Argentina on the ball. It's a phrase we didn't use too much in the first half as the U.S. dominated. It's a Rapino throw in. So Alex Morgan making her second appearance in this tournament, playing in the stadium that she calls home. It's a home for the Orlando Pride of the NWSL. Quick one in. Whistle before Morgan shot that one. Just announcing the subs now. There was a foul called. There's a free kick coming up. So, Stabile came in, Nunez came out. Nunez was already in a yellow and made a couple of risky challenges after that, so it's probably wise to make that change. It's Rapino or Haran from outside the box. Rapino with two goals on the night. This is 22 yards away. Rapino curling ball up. And it was too high. Beat the wall, but that ball didn't come down in time. Yeah, it didn't sit for her at all. Burr had it covered more than likely if it did dip below that bar. Megan Rapino now leading this team with five goals in total in 2021. It's got two tonight. Here's Morgan slotting it for Rapino. Got a tug from Delgado. That was enough to take her off. Stepping in. Hurst, good job. And then gave it away in the end to Uber. And now Argentina with Santana collecting for Jaimes. Argentina just making that one change. The U.S. making three after making one earlier. So they made four out of a possible six changes. Ball sent across. Horan will get it. They gave Horan a bit of a breather here tonight by not starting her. 
giving her a bit of a rest. Same with Dal Kemper and others. Ball played left to Sonnet. That cross headed right at goal. Flag was up anyway. Ali, you talked about the U.S. not wanting to get into bad habits. What do you want to see from this team in the second half? I think dictating tempo and knowing when to go, when to sit on it. We talked about throw-ins after that first Canada match, and both on the offensive and defensive side of things, can those be clean? Can they make sure they make the right decisions when they're playing that ball in? Because those are often transition moments in a game. As bizarre as that sounds, that is the reality. And, and I think the right decisions, the right touches, don't get sloppy because you can beat a player. Don't get sloppy because you think you can get a shot off at a difficult angle. You know, make the right decision so you have a tap-in at the end. There's Rapino, and she would have been wide open, but the flag was up. Two goals on the night for Rapino. They were about 10 minutes apart. Well, so far, it's been the best night for Blacko Andonofsky in terms of his team's execution in the attacking third. And they've they missed some chances, too, but tough to criticize when you get four goals and a half. No, you can't. And they're playing against the opponent that's out there. Yeah. Davidson getting a good look at center back. For Ertz. Give it away. Davidson collecting it. Got good positioning against Hymas. Back for Campbell. Sauerbrunn. Hurts. Oh, she had a lot of time. Sent this one long. And I actually think there is more space out there than the team anticipated coming into the match. And I don't believe that that's something that benefits the U.S. team. I think Glocka wanted to see them more challenged in terms of, of a, a very condensed defense that Argentina would throw out. Miller Rodriguez draws a foul. They want the competition to be strong tough to play against that's why that game against Canada was huge even though it was only a one nothing win and you might say they won ugly they did win that game right I mean you can't manufacture things out of the opponent that just aren't there and for the U.S. they are often not challenged enough and that is that is one of the challenges of being you know, far superior to a, a lot of the other countries and the challenge is the challenge is on these other countries, these other federations. The FAA to step up and support their women's teams. Menendez is coming out. Mariana La Roquette, who has the only goal for Argentina in this tournament, will come in. She'll play for the new Kansas City team in the NWSL. We look forward to watching her play there. And we're going to see another change as well. Uber will get the rest of the night off. Miriam Mayorga will replace her. Third Argentina sub. I'm curious with Mayorga coming in if she drops into a lower role and perhaps her phone bumps up a little higher to where Uber was. All played in wide. Campbell watches as Sada does too and it's a goal kick for the U.S. 52nd minute. The U.S. dominating. 4-0. Two goals by Rapino, one by Lloyd, one by Christy Mewis. All in the first half. After this, the U.S. has March off. Their players go back to their respective club teams, both here and abroad. And then probably a couple of friendlies in the month of April. Still to be determined. Here's Horan. That pass block. Lindsay cutting it. She and Crystal Dunn recently got new contract extensions from the Portland Thorns. Who have been an amazing story in the NWSL. They've got to look forward to crowds coming back to games because they were selling them out many nights. Same with the Portland Timbers, their men's team. Best environment in the women's game. Yeah. Hey, 
Dennis. We are starting to see some states lifting some of the restrictions, limited capacity. There's limited capacity tonight, up to 4,000. It's nice to see some fans able to come to games. We all look forward to when we all can get back to normal. Sonnet. Back for Davidson. She was going to go back to Camel, but will turn on her own and find Sauerbrunn. Mitch Purse, who started that first game, played some 81 minutes versus Canada as the right back. Horan. Sauerbrunn. Like JP looks like they're going into a 4-1-4-1 from Argentina. In that line of competition at mid. Purse head up. The cross was deflected out. It's a U.S. corner. Fifth minute, all U.S. up by four. They've beaten Argentina three times in three meetings, winning each game by seven goals. Press will take it. Third U.S. corner. Puts one up for grabs. Horan couldn't get it. It falls for Sonnet. That's blocked. Off Delgado. Sonnet, first one, back to recover. Washington Spirit back will cross it. Off the chest, and then the clearance. Headed down towards Midge Purse. Rodriguez forcing her. Nice turn by Midge Purse. It was well done, and then that's blocked out. Throw in U.S. Sauerbrunn for Davidson. That was intended for Sonnet. Argentina with that pick. That was dangerous. Argentina will recover. La Roquette. Under pressure, Delgado. Sash. Middle, Delphon. Brought down, Avasana. Davidson for the U.S. Julie Ertz. Davidson. Sauerbrunn. All the U.S. needed tonight was a draw, and they would win the She Believes Cup after Brazil had won the first game over Canada 2-0. They've done much better than that. A four-goal explosion in the first half has them almost lifting that trophy as we speak. Delgado, Tenefala Roquette, Sada did a good job there, winning it and keeping it in play. That was even better. Sada from Rapino. On the right foot, launches that one. Towards press, it comes back the other way. Sash. Rapino trying to turn. Comes all the way back. Outside the circle, Sauerbrunn advancing. Horan. Purse. Julie Ertz will find Emily Sonnen. Sonnet playing as the left back after replacing O'Hara as the right back, but with Sonnet moving to the left because of Purse playing right. And that's the versatility that Vlokanovsky said he wanted to see, and that's her serving the ball in, and questionable, is that a handball? Arms outside the body, the frame of the body. And it does look like it ricochets off that elbow. That was nothing a tough angle. Yeah. yeah look, looking live, I thought it was off the chest, but there is no video review. Not in this tournament. Here is Purse. Horan. And she had an opening for Morgan. 
Rush will get it. Looks up for Morgan. Too far. Almost had Rapino though, who was doubled up. And one thing we've seen a lot of in this game, and the pressure from the United States is always strong. We know in their counter press, but you're seeing the defenders, whether it's Sonnet on this side, Purse on the other, Becky Sauerbrunn in that center back position, they're stepping in front of the player and winning the ball before she's able to get it. And that was something that Sauerbrunn told us before the Columbia matches they're working on. If they can read that pressure, if they can step in front of their player and win the ball so they negate them all together. Diana, it's been done well tonight. Diana Falfan is coming out, replaced by an even younger player. Falfan is 20. This player is 18. Dalila Ippolito was Argentina's youngest player at the World Cup at the age of 17. She plays for the club side, Juventus. Argentina with it, pushing it left. The more players Argentina can get to play in other countries, especially where they take it a bit more serious, the better their national team program will become. Morgan slips it through, right side press. Rapino is trying to make the run. Cut off there, Stabile. Press stays with her. U.S. with that killer instinct. They're up 4 nothing, but they don't give up on any ball. They're trying to win it back and get a fifth goal. Good hard work by Press initially. Yeah, and it's Purse who steps in, and now you're seeing the quick one-two again. When you have teams that are so man-centric, the one-two works incredibly well because you can play that ball release and spin, and they're just going to be a step behind. I think that's one of the things U.S. has done well tonight. Cleared by Pereira. Ravaket cutting it back. Pressure there. U.S. collectively trying to win this ball. And they do. For the moment. Now Horan gets it. Short ball to press. Immediate look. And Herrera almost misplayed it. If she bobbles it there, she's in a lot of trouble. And that was empty behind her. Past the hour mark, it's a 4 0 U.S. lead. And that ball was out. Well, first took a throw in, but they are going to let play continue. It was almost the second ball there on the field. The U.S. on it. It's Purse who plays for Sky Blue. The NWSL finds Sauerbrunn. Back for Davidson. Ertz. Ball's tackled out. Last touch by Yamila Rodriguez. We're going to see some subs. Julia Ertz getting a breather. She played <laughs> 10 straight full 90s. Jalen Howell will get her second appearance. And Megan Rapino, who we thought would get some 60 minutes tonight. That's what she gets. A little bit better. Sophia Smith will come in. And the U.S. have done now with their subs. So the U.S. has been able to get a lot of things done here tonight besides scoring these goals. Rodriguez is coming out. Yael Oviedo will come in instead. Besides getting the goals, Ali, they're able to rest some players. They gave the players that they wanted to 45 minutes. They gave others 60. And now you're able to see a Jalen Howell get more minutes than she's had so far in her career. And the same with Sophia Smith. Exactly right, and you're getting to see versatility out of Sonnet. Sorry, in the right back in, in the previous match, now in the left back position. Versatility could be key when you narrow that roster down to 18 for the Olympics. How many players can play more than one position? 
So Rapino finished her night with a couple of goals. Strong performance for her. Overall strong performance for the U.S. Free kick there from Press. Headed away by Argentina. Press in a box. Driving it. And it's wide. Goal kick Pereira. In the 64th minute, two goals by Rapino, one by Carly Lloyd, one by Christy Mewis. All in the first half. And like in any tournament, you hope to play well in your first game, even better in the second, even better in the third. And the U.S. can take certainly more out of this game than the other two. Ball played long for Smith. Young Smith will take it inside, lost it, got it back. Good dribbling skills, looks up, crossing, it's deflected. Mewis! Oh, she could have had her second goal. Could have, should have. <laughs> Didn't see what happened with Becky Sauerbrunn, but there is always concern. There was a collision, down. collision and air ball. And it was her and, and Howell actually coming together in the air. She appears to be okay, walking off under her own power. Had a smile in the end to say she's fine. You can almost hear that conversation. Almost. <laughs> be a throw in here for the U.S. when play continues. We were talking, Ali, before about the U.S. improvement, and granted, Argentina is the weakest of the three teams that they're facing, but like you said, you can only play against who you're facing that night. So if they were not looking good and scoring four goals, there'd be criticism because it is against Argentina. Exactly right. And one of the things we were questioning coming in is that they cleaned up that final product. And the answer is yes, but it's still far from perfect. I mean, a lot more chances could be buried. That last one with Mewis is a, is a good example. Throw in far side for Midge Purse. Jalen Howell. Horan. Press. Shot or pass was deflected out either way. It's a corner for the U.S. And again, Kristen Press will take it. Sixty-seventh minute. U.S. up four nothing over Argentina. Brass will put it out. Pereira came out. Got a piece of it. Maybe a piece of a teammate. Should be another corner. We'll try it again from Kristen Press. Another one off the right foot. Pereira again. Spilled it. Smith blocked. It's still loose. Collected and sent back by Sonnet. This ball is deflected. Hymas was going to let it go. And now she does for the goal kick. out of the back trailing four nothing they gave up four to brazil in game one but that was a closer game than the scoreline indicated 
not the same tonight. Hippolito. Oh, another giveaway for Argentina. Clipped ahead. Tenta for Morgan. Sash got it wide. Stabile. Slowing it down. Hymas. The U.S. are back on it. And Smith's attempt goes out. Goal kick. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text PLAY to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game. In the 69th minute, Pereira sends it long. A battle for the ball with Smith. Ipolito wins it for Stabile. Ipolito moving it ahead. Missed Oviedo with a pass. Ipolito back on it. Lost it to Howell. And another Argentina player is down. Play continues and now it is stopped. It is Hymas in that challenge. She's had a lot of work to do today. Pretty yeah, much alone up front. Exactly right. And they're asking her to come back so deep defensively. She's another one of those players that was on the World Cup team in 2019. Used to play with Santos and Lyon. If you play for Lyon, you've got to have some ability. Here is Press. With the keeper off her line, but that was too close to her. Morgan was the open player that it looked like Press was trying to get to. And Jaime is the only player in Argentinian women's football history who has won a Champions League. That was with Leon. Back and forth, this one goes. It's finally settled. Christy Mewis. Push it back. Sourwood. Midge Purse. 71st minute. Four first half goals for the U.S. Put them in complete control of this. Two by Rapina, one by Lloyd, one by Christy Mewis. Last time these two clubs met was in 2014. Seven. Nothing win for the U.S. All seven goals were scored by Press and Lloyd. Four by Press, three for Lloyd. Press on the ball, leaving it. Horan. Switched by Davidson. Sauerbrunn in the circle. Purse from Howell. Right sideline. Sophia Smith. Nice footwork again. Finally, in the end, it was lost. And out, it belongs to Argentina. Smith is another one of those players that will be playing for the Portland Thorns of the NWSL, former number one pick in 2020. Off Howell. And whistle there. The foul against Argentina with Morgan down. And a booking. And another high boot. Morgan just checking off that back line. Santana goes in. She gets the yellow. 73rd minute. Free kick coming up here. Press. We'll take it. Telling players to calm down a bit before this free kick is taken. 73rd minute. With the U.S. up by four. Press. Puts it up there. Not a down wide. It's Christy Mewis that was the closest one to it. And that's going to go out for a goal kick. 
If you would like to vote for the MVP, you can do that right now on U.S. Soccer on their Twitter feed. Those are the potential ones. Adriana Dabinia for Brazil, Rose Lavelle, USA, and Kristen Press for the USA. There was a five-person executive committee that developed the list, and they'll have a say in the vote as well as you at home. Good list, huh? I wouldn't have yep. thought Adriana would be on that list coming into this tournament, but she had herself a nice she believes cut. Yep. And I think that was a miss by Pia not to bring her on against the U.S. or starter. I think overall, Allie, that Brazil would have to be pretty pleased with what they did. I mean, not happy that they lost against the U.S., but gave a good account of themselves, and they closed out with the win over Canada, so they'll finish in second place. Interesting that how much they did test the U.S. And I'm talking to Vlaco about how they kept two, sometimes three players above the ball, and that did pose some problems for them. So when we talk about learning opportunities for this group and playing against top competition, you know, that was one wrinkle that the U.S. wasn't anticipating, and, and they had to adjust. What was it? He told us 70% the transition moments from... Offense to defense went down by 70% in that second half with the adjustments that they yeah. made. It was a lot. They were forced into those adjustments, but that's what they wanted. They want to be challenged there. Up for Haran. And that's picked off. Go got him. Santana. Hymas. Go got him. All the way back. Sash for Delgado. Pressure there from Press. And now the ball was knocked out. Last touch by Jalen Howell. Plays at Florida State University. And another change is coming up. And she deserves a rest. Hymas is coming out. Replaced by Valentina Camara. And that's it. It's a sixth sub. Argentina on the ball. They'll consider this a pretty good second half if they don't concede again after conceding four goals in the first half of play. As the U.S. put it out of reach. Howell. Davidson. Osana. How has Davidson looked to you tonight, Allie? Pretty clean? In terms of her touches, Tanner Davidson? Yeah, absolutely. I thought Tierna, I mean, again, not tested defensively, but one turnover I can recall. There's Purse on the right. Doubled up, knocked out, corner, USA. Just the sixth cap for Midge Purse, or Margaret Purse, but she goes by Midge for the most part. Christy Mewis will take this corner. not only started tonight, she's going to get a full 90 in here. And without Ertz in there, the last corners have gone back post. We'll see if that holds true. Lewis ready. Left-footed in swinger to the middle. And Humphrey Morgan couldn't bring it down cleanly. With a goalkeeper out. And that's one thing we've seen out of Pereira is she'll go fishing, and this ball is more driven across the top of the six. Pereira can't get a make a play on it. And it looks like it just wrong foots Alex Morgan. Little nick, perhaps, by Lindsey Aran throws the trajectory off. Oviedo lost it there. U.S. collects. Christy Mewis plays it safely back to Jane Campbell. Not much for Campbell to do tonight. 
trying to become the number two goalkeeper to Alyssa Nair. You still have Ashlyn Harris, Casey Murphy, who's on this squad in that group. Adriana French, who's battled injuries, still is always mentioned among goalkeepers. Sash will clear it. Sonnet back to Campbell, who makes her second start this year. She played in that second game against Columbia in January. And not tested there either. That's one of the challenges, you know, with limited games. How do you balance giving, if you're Blocko, how do you balance giving listen air time versus who potentially is going to be your number two? And do you put them in a more competitive match where they will be facing shots? Moran will get it back on this left. It's headed towards the middle. Howell will play it back. Sauerbrunn. Jalen Howell pushing it to the right. And in the box, too close to Pareda with three U.S. players just outside the box. Eightieth minute, U.S. up four nothing. Pareda is going to get that ball away. Among the crowd tonight, we're told 600 tickets made available by U.S. Soccer to frontline workers and their guests as a thank you. We're told that everyone attending there had both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. They played so many games down here in Orlando, they wanted to reward those frontline workers. Six consecutive national team games here, maybe more to come. Five played by the women, one by the men. We thank all of the frontline workers for what they've done during this pandemic. Absolutely. Nationwide. Worldwide. Here's Press. Slonet. Sauerbrunn pushing right. Back for Sonnet. Davidson slotting left. She can play left back, so it looks like right now that's what they've done with Sonnet shifting to the middle. At least for now. Sonnet. Wide for Davidson. There's a cross off that left foot. Missed one target, found another. Christy Mewis. Smith blocked. Mewis won it back. Purse. Christy Mewis. That was some pretty good passing in tight spaces. No real margin for error there. And that's one of those situations where I think they can bring it back out, recycle it. It's the patience part that they're trying to learn even more. And it's a good look at the far side of your screen. You can see how they just spy that attacking mid, the number 10 spot. Christine Mewis, someone's always on her. They're being marked. That's where you try to manipulate Argentina and drag him out of that space. Davidson is wide on this left side. That's where she played in her only World Cup appearance, which she had a couple of assists in that game against Chile. Pushed wide on the left side. Played across. Pereira spilled it. And now it's pushed over towards Lara Kent. Grab it. And almost right on cue from UJP from Tierna Davidson with the initial go that the United States had in. Blocko talked about versatility. Well, Tierna Davidson has that. She was playing a six defensive mid for Stanford in college, now center back, outside back. So she does have capabilities there because look at the squad and you think, who's that backup for Julie Ertz if Julie Ertz, for whatever reason, can't go? Is it a Jaylene Howell, or is it a Tierna Davidson who can slide into that spot? All good questions that Vladko Andonovsky will have to answer at some point. Jokingly, he said the other day when someone asked him how many roster spots are open for the Olympics, he said 18. <laughs> and of course, it's it's not. That's the full roster, but he must be Ali at 
what 14 or 16 you would you would yes you would think he's close to that at this point barring injury of course i think 16's aggressive i do yeah. i, I so think 14, 14. yeah fair i do too yeah but there'll be tough decisions that have to be made for sure all slotted through by Mayorga. Smith. Looking. Slotting it through. Morgan. And there it is for Alex Morgan. 5 nothing U.S. One of the rare forays of Argentina getting forward and then the U.S. going in transition from that defense to offensive shape. They win the ball. It's Becky Sauerbrunn who steps up. And when she wins it, that ball falls kindly at the feet of Sophia Smith. And once she gets going and driving towards that central area, this is when angles start to shift and change. And you can see she draws three defenders. And that channel opens right up for Alex Morgan, who's just sitting between the two center backs and does so well just to shift her body shape. Now she's on the half turn, and she can go stride in when that ball is laid right in front of her. Center back Alex, can't get a touch on it, and the finish ensues. For Alex Morgan, a 108th international goal. She was tied with Michelle Akers for fifth place all time. She's now alone in fifth. Her 35th goal in her last 45 games. Christy Mewis off of the right foot, and that one goes wide. Five nothing U.S. Their first goal of the second half. See the history for the U.S. They've won every other year in the She Believes Cup. And they'll become the first to win it back to back. Sent up by Morgan. Brought down. And the whistle against the U.S. in the 86th minute. Thirty-one-year-old Alex Morgan scoring here in her home stadium. She plays and she'll be playing again for the Orlando Pride after a short stint at Tottenham in 2020. The battle clears. There's one of the by Sonnet. Davidson over to Sonnet. Playing out of pressure. That was well done. She slips that ball ahead. Boy, did they break that pressure easily. Press towards the middle. Purse moving ahead. Right sideline. Smith trying to find Christy Mewis. Purse. Smith in. Off Morgan. Christy Mewis. Morgan on the turn. Alex Morgan is blocked. Should be another corner for the U.S. And you almost feel for Argentina. Look how many players they get below the ball. How many players they have in the 18 and still having difficulty just getting a touch on it. Let alone getting it outside of the 18. And there's the deflection that comes in at the end as Morgan tries to wrap around that and hit it far post. Exactly the right thing. Once that ball goes by, you've got to turn, frame the goal, 
And now you make the goal bigger for your team, and it's a simple tap in for her at the back post. Good finish. 60th international goal for Kristen Press. And her 11th in her last 14 games. And I believe, Ali, that's the first time they've converted directly off of a corner kick in this tournament. I, I think you're right. Remember, they had 13 attempts in game one. And uncharacteristically for them, didn't come up with a single one there. Ball knocked out of play. And you do have to feel sorry for Argentina. The subs that they made were not for tactical reasons. They're gassed. Legs are very heavy. They've been in survival mode probably this second half against the number one ranked team in the world, the U.S. Of course, Argentina came in late. Japan was supposed to be in this tournament but could not participate due to COVID. And Argentina came in. Sonnet tackled away. Howell still fighting to try to win that ball. Paris. What was that? It's a free kick. <laughs> what was before that? Ninetieth minute. And Ipolito gets booked. Third yellow card on Argentina tonight. And I think that's just a sign of frustration from Argentina. Two players tackling Mitch Purse, really. Ball played in. And Morgan just put it too high. Almost ended this game with an exclamation point. And real quality on the service. From Kristen Press, you can see it, the U.S. just bunches up at the top of the 18. If you can, you run your player into someone else. Alex Morgan gets free. That was it. Final whistle while we were away on replay. U.S. with an easy victory tonight. They can repeat it with a couple of goals. Lloyd, Christy Mewis, Morgan, and Press all scoring in a 6-0 win. They easily win the She Believes Cup trophy. All they needed tonight was a draw, and they got a lot more than that. Ali, your takeaway? I think the U.S. performed the way we anticipated, and that was coming up against an Argentinian team that they were likely going to pin in and sit back voluntarily. But I was impressed with the fluidity in which how the United States did it in that first half. The rotations they used, the timing of those rotations, and the tactical understanding of what spaces not to get into. Or the simple decision-making of staying in one spot and not going into collapse an area that that you're going to exploit. I thought the U.S. looked strong in that first half. I think with the substitutions coming in, the fluidity suffered a bit. But in the end, this is about evaluation of players, really, for Vlakovanovsky and players like Alex Morgan. Strong performances. I think some of the players that got their st starts, Casey Kruger, had a really good night. Tierna Davidson not tested, but looked comfortable alongside Becky Sauerbrunn. Christy Mewis, what can you say? I mean, came in, had a big goal, yeah. good assist. I think it bode well for a lot of the individuals that are looking to make a, a case for themselves.